Hi, and welcome on to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man, Mr. DT. How are you doing, bruv? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, good, man. Good. Enjoy your holiday? Not too bad. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I knew you. And you, you as usual, stirring the pot and all that whilst I was what? away. What was I doing? Oh, Robbie's private island. <laughs> Private jet, <laughs> boat, all that. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you. you that yacht just, was yours in I the wish, background. Do you know how much that yacht, right? That yacht that was in the background, right? Do you know how much it was to hire that yacht for the week, they said? You should right? know. You set the price. <laughs> set the price. Shut up. Right? 100 grand for a week. Yeah, 100 grand for a week. So I, I was like, bloody. And there's people hiring it. I'm like, where are these people? There's people out there that got some serious dough, man. Trust me, a hundred grand a week. I'm just gonna keep laughing at you. Jesus just, Christ! Yeah, no, I see. I did. It was see nice. It was beautiful. I was it, on, it looked nice. The food yeah, yeah. Nice. I was on a, the food was brilliant, man. I was on like on a Greek island, man. It was nice, really nice. The only thing is, I wasn't there for too long. I was only there for a few days. Yeah, you used for a wedding, wasn't it? I was there. What's not a wedding? Was it not a wedding? No, no, is no. It was for a few days, man. Just oh, you chilling. Just went for a break. Well, I was, I was supposed to go for a break, but every morning I was waking up. Hi! Welcome <laughs> to <laughs> FTV Transfer Daily. Transfer Daily. What, in front, of, in front of a yacht? In front of the, you know, with the sea. Well, you've got to set the scene, innit? Yeah, I can imagine you walking around <laughs> and just going, mm, nice background there. Yeah, let's go and uh, take a picture. I there. really stood out as well. I was like the only black guy in the whole island. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, be- I'd be like there doing, like, in random places doing videos. I could see people looking and say, who the hell is that? What, but you, that? you know the maddest thing is, that you you say that but then there was a reggae bar there there was a reggae bar there yeah you know it was what I mean? wicked as well and it was all I, like, honestly i've got mad love out there man it was you know all bob marley posters on the wall oh, playing yeah, reggae yeah, yeah. did they not nice. play any of yours no they didn't play none of mine <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine that in season he's like crucial robbie dustin dukok <laughs> i'm getting tunes. a lot of love out there man it's real i love greece man it's a, it's a you beautiful miss Madrid, place though, man. and you know what whilst i was out there i was chatting to a lot of fans um you know particularly like when i was in athens mm. and some uh, some of the other places and, and uh, i was chatting to greek people out there and all of them every single one of them was bigging up socrates mm. and saying that yo this is can you, proper um, sign in. Can you pronounce his surname yet? Papa Bopolos. <laughs> I, I ain't even attempted it. I ain't, pop, Come on. I ain't attempted it. I'll absolutely butcher it. Come I'm on. just calling him Socrates. Give us a surname, man. Nah, man, I ain't even attempted it. It's like some <laughs> madness. It's like. Do you know I, what? They taught me how to pronounce it about three, four times and I still mess it up. I know. It's, it's just like, listen, he's one of them players that goes by his first name and that's good for me. I saw Socrates. What, who was it? Was it Bleacher Report or one of those? They they done something and they said uh, it was like a commentary thing or a sport bible or one of them. It was brilliant. And they said something like Socrates Popobophilus passes to Costantino's. Marapinus, who then passes it to Henrik Mkhitaryan, who passes it on then to Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, who then cross. <laughs> and it's like all these long, long names. Mad. Awesome I know we said now. we want big signings, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, we didn't mean the name. It's, it's like, just big names. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Imagine how much that will cost to put some of their names on the back of a shirt. Talking of shirts, the new Arsenal kit. Uh, Your new Arsenal um, uh, kits uh, came out. Uh, now, I saw one video with you going in, uh, ranting about the shirts. Um, yeah. What do you think? I, I went to the uh, kit launch, uh, the Arsenal kit launch. A nine hour kit launch. Oh, there's a weird. It was weird, that was. You know, because uh, I was like, you know, they said it started at 10. I got there quite early. And it just went on all day. It was just like, they they like uh, commission like an area in Leicester Square, mm-hmm. um, and they set up like, I don't know, it'd be almost like a sort of pop up yeah, shop, pop up shops type, yeah. And they were selling the shirts there. Mm-hmm. They had like a D, couple of DJs playing, DJ Target, and people like good music. My mate Nick Bright was DJing. Yeah, they had good music, and they were DJing. Um, that was it, really. And then on, later on in the day, they had Ray Parler, and Perez. Robert Perez. They had Alex Scott. Um, Speaking, it's a bit of a weird launch. Yeah, you know, I thought mm. it'd be a bit more glitzy, a bit more. You know, you know, you know the thing is, because everyone strange knows one. what the kit looks like. Well, it that's it. Gets leaked as well. Now there's no. This is the madness. Now is that every single one of these kits always gets leaked out ages before. Everyone knows what it's looked like. So yeah, but, uh, yeah it's, I'm, it's, it's, I'm not happy. At it's all. a strange I'm one. I'm not happy with the away kit at all. All right, let's let's the the home kit. 
um, right, you know, which was described. I don't know if you saw the. We did a, a interview with poet. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, uh, he cracked me up right because he goes, Arsenal have made every um, member of the team a captain and given everybody a captain's yeah, armband, arm <laughs> which was killing me with laughter. Yeah. Right, so they, you you got the design of the new sh um, home shirt, which. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are not feeling the fact that they've put no. that sort of... Which I don't think is that bad, but looks, they've put that sort of thing on the arms. It's pink as well, more than red, and it looks shit. Let's be real about it. Oh, I, it's not that when bad. I look, when I looked at the pictures of the red kit, I absolutely hated it. When I got it in my hands, it actually didn't look too bad. That's right. I like the neck. What? A lot of people have been criticising nah, the neck. the neck's shocking. Shocking. Yeah? Yeah, that's like some woman's off-the-shoulder nightdress. <laughs> It's like, that, listen, it's like, the only thing that gives it any credibility is that they've kept red and white and it's got an Arsenal badge on it. That's about it. It's just, I don't like the style of it. It doesn't look too bad. I gave it a 7 out of 10 because in my hand it actually looked better than... You got one? Yeah, yeah, I got one. So when you put it on, don't it look, you don't like how it looks? It, it, fit, it fits okay, but I just, when I actually started wearing it, and going around in it, and like when I had it on in Madrid and stuff, I don't like the neckline. It just feels like it's constantly slipping. It's it just doesn't feel right. It just mm. doesn't, and I can't get this thing on the sleeves out. And it's just it doesn't. It's just not feeling nah, right. Nah, the only thing I like from it, I like the fact that the the badge is stitched on. It's not one of these crappy, mm. you know, like the Fly Emirates, which is like the mm. stuck on stuff. The logo of Puma. I don't get why there's a Puma logo here, and then there's two on, like there's one on each shoulder. Mm. So how many fucking logos do you want? <laughs> we know it's Puma. <laughs> so why are you putting all these logos on it? I don't need to see all your shitty logos. So there's that side of things. The away kit. No, with, with, with the home kit, the other thing that's been quite controversial, Is which I think unnecessarily... Unnecessary. So, so there's the yeah, there's the bit on the front. Oh, that looks all right. The bit on the front. Well, it's meant uh, the the sleeve bit is what's meant to. This is what it's meant. To, I don't get it at all. <laughs> I even watched the video of the guy that designed it, um, and him trying to talk about it and trying to say how they all. I, I just watched that video and I was like, yeah, all you've done is just announce who you are, so we can go and find out who the fuck made it. <laughs> Because it's just like, I'm so glad that Puma are not going to be our sponsors next season. This is the worst sponsor in the history of Arsenal. I've like, look, I'm wearing a Puma top. I like Puma. I li I, you know what I like? A you Puma. get sponsored by them. I'm not getting sponsored by oh, Puma. Right, cool. I, 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 listen, I was down there last, I was down there yesterday. I didn't even get a free shirt, mate. They're shit. I didn't get a free shirt. I didn't even get invited round. Uh, have you seen? Have you seen? Right, so listen, I've got no. Them tops are so flimsy. Listen, I've got They're no not. affiliation to Puma, but I do actually like Puma stuff. I I, I buy like Puma stuff I don't independently. Like no. I like I like their um, trainers. I like their retro stuff that they do. Some of that particular. stuff's nice, but the kits yeah. they've made for us are shit. Um, visit Rwanda. On the on the sleeves. Now that's been quite controversial. I what, think Wakanda forever. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, yeah. Now, there's, there's, there, there's been a lot of controversy over it because. Um, yes, we know. I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting in no political conversation whatsoever. There's yeah. something that well, I've what, learned. Well, what, 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 what the talk on the Visit Rwanda thing is, is that Rwanda, I think it was, uh, I think this sort of came across from a parliament in Germany. Yeah. Because they give a lot of money to Rwanda in, yeah. aid, in aid. So they were like, well, how have you guys got 30 million, I think it's 30 million pounds to they're pay paying for Arsenal the sponsorship. To have the, shirt, to, to have the sponsorship on the sleeves. So are they using Where that have you got the money, money to pay for Arsenal sponsorship to have Visit Rwanda on it? Yeah. Now, the people in Rwanda, the government are saying, listen, this is something that's going to help the country because it will enable people to, you know, pr who's promoting our country around the world. And funny enough, you know what? I call them... Um, a couple of months ago, I was chatting to a guy, and he said to me, he goes, yeah, he goes, I've just come back from holiday. Uh, I said, yeah, where'd you go? He said, Rwanda. I said, Rwanda? Because you know what? It's always in your head. You yeah. just think of the civil war and all the people who got killed there and that. Yeah. And he said, actually, Robbie, it's one of the most beautiful countries I've ever been to. He goes, it was beautiful. So obviously now they're trying to, they're trying to move beyond yeah. the whole civil war thing. 
and that, and they're trying to promote mm. the country because it is, you know, when you check out the history of Rwanda, it's a beautiful country. There's so much natural resources yeah. there. There's so many, um, I heard that like uh, the wildlife there and that's unbelievable. So they're trying to promote it now. They're trying to put the country mm. in a different light. So I understand both counts. I understand where the German government will be, <clears throat> politicians will be saying, well, hold on, well, you got the money to pay Arsenal for. And I understand why Arsenal have taken the sponsorship because, you know, it is a positive thing because they're trying to promote the positive aspect of the country. But yeah. Yeah, that has made the shirt even more controversial by having that on it. And yeah. then, I don't know, you know what? I have to say, the majority of people I've spoken to have not really been feeling that shirt. No. They've not really been feeling that home shirt. The away shirt, which is the the um, the dark blue one. Now I was down here. Yes, I saw your review, and you're not feeling that shirt at all. And I'll get you. You can have your chance to have your say on that in a minute. But I have to say, when I was down there yesterday, the majority of people that I spoke to down there liked that shirt. They liked that away blue shirt. They liked the sort of design on. Oh, I don't even know how to des describe it. Like. It looks like a mountain on the front, and the shorts. I know you're you're not going to wear them. <laughs> He's not feeling it. But the shorts are different, aren't they? It's a different, different. style. You won't catch me wearing them in Magaluf. <laughs> on an absolute. They are like they do look like, like sort of beach shorts type thing, but they it's different, are isn't it? Horrendous. Listen, the players look good in the kit because the players have got six packs and perfect bodies, right? Them kits are not designed for average people or fat people, or anything <laughs> like that. Now, I'm a traditionalist. I believe that the away kit should be yellow and blue. Do whatever you want with the design, but make it yellow and blue. You can see how mad you can go when not you go had, back to the... Not always had yellow kits. Predominantly, we're yellow and blue. Yeah, but we're right? not always had well, yellow. But predominantly, we always have free kits we had a now. a green away kit right? one time. Go... What I'm saying is, predominantly, we're yellow and blue, right? Yeah. That we're red, white, yellow, blue. We've got a third kit every year now. Go fuck that up. Go do what you want with that. Go and come out with the most wildest, extremist, maddest colours. All right? No fan cares about that. You can see what kind of levels you can go to with the yellow kit when you think back to the bruised banana kit. Which yeah. everybody hated when it first came it's out. It's mad. Mad retro. Which everybody loved hated. It. When loved it. it. If we did a programme, if Arsenal Fan TV would have been around or whatever, and... Um, the, the kit came under the same amount of scrutiny as the kits now come under. I remember when that I'm kit came sure out. I'm not too sure it would. I'm not too people sure People were hating tell you why? on that kit. Do you know why I tell you why? Come on, be do honest. Me, do you want me to tell you why? I don't think that uh, why that kit would drop is because when that kit came out, we was in an era where it was pretty, everything was bland. Exactly. It was straightforward. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah, but listen, now look at the Nigeria kit. For example, brilliant yeah, that blew up. Best kit right? in the world. Now Cup. that will go down with, you know, if we've done an away kit with Adidas next year, with, you know, in that kind of style, yeah, it will it will blow. But what I'm saying is, keep the same colour. That's the first thing. <coughs> it's dark blue, right? We never do well in blue kits anyway. Just look at last season. They give some shitty <laughs> fucking sky blue thing that we could never win in. Crap. I'm glad that's gone. In the bin you go. But this is just... It's dark blue. It's crap. It's just... It's just this, it, I'm telling you, right? I said this in my review. The person who designed it is either blind, a Tottenham fan, or both. <laughs> it's not that bad, man. It is. But most people down at the kit launch liked it. Yeah, well done. Good for them. It's crap. And, and just going back to what you said about the... the tr your traditionalists and... When that bruised banana kit came out, nobody, everybody, because I we were just kid. used. I was a kid. Right? I loved we, it. We were used to playing kits, right? I and was that a, came I was out. a kid and I loved it. Could you imagine if that had come out and, and, you know, an equivalent would have come out now? People would have hated it. No, they wouldn't hate it now because now. No, I'm not on about bruised banana. I'm on about like a real sort of wacky kit. You go from something being. Yeah, but I think it uh, would be on, You go from something being normal, like very mm. traditional styles to something really outlandish, right? I mean, you're having a go at this kit. You're saying about the shorts, you wouldn't wear that in Magaluf and that because those shorts look like sort of beach shorts, something different. Who's to say in 10 years' time 
People be looking back on that and saying that's a classic design. No, no one's coming back to these kits and saying it's classic. No chance. Puma's the worst sponsor we've had. Simple as that. The kits are made. I don't know what they make them on. If Puma ever decide to bring out um, a range of condoms, don't use them because they won't work. <laughs> You'll be impregnating everyone. That shit's splitting all the time. Do you know what I mean? And the big thing that got me with this whole thing is that they have no infant kits from newborn to five years old. None available anywhere across the country. In the store, online, Puma. No, they'll none. probably bring them out next you know week when? or something. You know why? Why? Because Puma ain't delivered them. How can you release a kit and not have them delivered? Well, look at the Nigerian kit. That kit... Yeah, but everyone that, knew. No, no, no. No, but no, hold on. No, but everyone, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They done pre-orders. Yeah? Yeah. Three million of them went. Nike knew... Yeah. No, the pre-order is they've had three million people want them. Yeah, for the pre-order. Yeah, yeah the and they can't deliver. That's Nike's choice. Nike decided how much they were going to limit it to. Nike decided that well, they were never going to... How dumb is that? Yeah, man? but that's them. Right? They no, but they, yeah, but they, they decided they're not going to re-release. Once it's gone, it's gone. That's, that's dumb. That, that's Nike's choice. Yeah, well, that's dumb. I know it's dumb, but what I'm saying is that's Everybody Nike's choice. Everybody wants that kit. But what I'm saying is with this, with Puma, you know when the re release date is? We knew when that kit was made, right? Because how long have we even seen the designs for it? We're talking months ago. I remember seeing that design before the season finished. The players that were used in the video were obviously during when the season was on and they're doing their campaign and everything else. How can they not have enough stock or like have it ready and delivered? How, how? Do yeah, you but this is the same thing for the, the World Cup. How can you, that, that kit there, the Nigeria kit, how can, you know? Because surely, that was Nike's choice. Yeah, but you want to sell them though. You want to support making that them. That was Nike's choice. They, they, they had a limit. They no, had but no, they no, did. I heard yesterday, I went to a shop actually, I was trying to buy one. Right, and, and uh, they said that they are going to be bringing out more. Because maybe, that's not make it, maybe Nike have decided they're going well, to bring they, more. Well, they messed up, innit? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how many of them yeah, could they, they be selling? But what I'm saying is, so is they, that with is, Puma, you can't mess up a launch date of having none. It's not like Nike had no Nigeria kits. They had them. They just shortfalled. No, yeah. no, you say, so you're saying they didn't have none of the junior kits? The, the, the inf infants inf inf from ones. one to five. They've mm. not delivered them. They're none, like physically, not like they had some and they sold out and they're like, because that you can understand, right? Mm. There was a massive buy for them or... No, they had none, physically none. Mm. There are no one to five-year-olds wearing the away kit. <laughs> none, physically none whatsoever. You go onto the website and you go to select uh, the infant kit and all the boxes are marked out, so you can't buy it. When I went into the store, I was doing a commercial yesterday, a couple of miles away from the store. So I thought, all right, once I finish, I'll shoot into the store at the Emirates and go and grab the kids' uh, kids kit and myself one and everything else. And I managed to buy my seven-year-old one. But my youngest one, nothing. Nothing at all. Not there. Oh, and the other thing as well. On the home kits, I got their name and numbers on. And I had it done in, you've got two styles of lettering. You've got like the Premier League lettering and cup lettering. Cup lettering looks wicked because it's like the 3D one. So I had their kits done in the 3D one, the cup one. Went there yesterday, went to go and do the lettering. And they've sold out of the 3D lettering. <laughs> I'm like, do you not prepare? You know there's a kit launch. You just launched last week, one kit. You've got another coming out this week. But you've not... Got enough well, numbers. Maybe, you know, it's gone. Maybe, no, maybe who organizes this? The kit's blowing up, maybe. It's a six, no, it's not right? the kit's blowing up. It's just that they're just not prepared. It's like, I'm not even going to get into it, but it's like the final remains of arson just leaving us with something. It's like, <laughs> what's gonna, it? Well, it's like, it's yeah, an arson Venga now. Yeah, I'm blaming him. Oh, I'm blaming him. That it's kit was Vegas designed. Fault. That kit was designed when Arsene was still oh, manager. You, you can't, you can't it's his him, fault. You can't leave him alone, can you? He's I, gone now. Leave I him even, alone. I even went to Madrid last week <laughs> to try and make sure that he signs there as manager. Go on, just make sure you go. Because I just got this feeling that Wenger's going to turn up um, Imagine at Colney on day one of training. <laughs> just like, hi, start Imagine he does turn trees. up at Real Madrid and wins another Champions League. He ain't winning no Champions League at Real Madrid, man. He ain't going there. We spoke to some Real Madrid fans last week. 
and they were mortified at the thought of Arsene Wenger being manager. A lot of them were like, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, yeah, great. Now, phew, wow, I can see there being mutiny within the Real Madrid fans if he's... And that's a lot of... They, they, they respect him for what he's done, and they say, 10, 15 years ago, okay, he was the man. Now... So the Madrid versions of you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you something, if you think we were bad, them lot, they, they're all really, yeah, these foreign <laughs> fans, they, you see what happened at Sport in Lisbon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their, their fans, they went and... They went to the training ground, training tried to ground attack all day. They actually attacked some of the players. One yeah. of the players got his head split open and everything. What was it? Three players have con uh, cancelled their contracts already. Yeah. There's a player that we've been linked with. Gelsa Martins. Yeah, yeah that's he's now he's saying um, he's he wants worth, to cancel his contract. He's worth what, 60 million. 60 right? million or something. So he's like, no, nah, I'll, I'll cancel my contract as well. So Arsenal are sniffing, go, wee, free, <laughs> free transfer, bargain, let's get in there. So, yeah, if, if listen, if he does go to Real Madrid, fair play to him. He's got his drop. But listen, once them results, uh, results start going wrong, if he goes to. Um, you know, the new Camp, for example, and he gets slapped up like we used to get slapped up when we go to the Etihad or <laughs> Old Trafford and stuff like that. Be careful what you wish for, though. Look, they, uh, there was a lot of their fans um, in La Liga, through, throughout La Liga, who was having a go at Zidane. I can't see how you're Zidane's Zidane's won a cup now, he's left. They were? They I were having a go at Zidane. I, know, I can't. Right, and, and Zidane's left now. Look, they Their levels even, are mad. Right, despite how big they are, they're finding it difficult to find a man. Their levels are mad. They were trying to get Allegri, he said yeah, no. Their, their levels are mad. Right. Because their levels does are that, like... Well, hold on, what does that show you, right? Because they, they wanted Allegri. There's a lot of people having a go at the Arsenal board for not getting Allegri. I, I Real think, Madrid wanted Allegri, he turned them down, said I, I'm staying at Juventus. I, I, so, I, think, I think that maybe the levels at Real Madrid are so... The pressures are just ridiculous. You've got to be some serious person to take that over and, and succeed. It's like within season one, minimum requirement is... But you've got to win the league or the Champions League or you've gone, isn't it? Exactly. So you can't go like, in there and say, I've won the Copa del Rey. And, it, no, you you ain't know, getting, yeah. and you ain't getting a bed in in period. But no. You no, ain't getting no, none no. of that. No. So it's not like Allegri has done amazing and he, for me, is just an unbelievable manager. But he could ruin it all by going to Real Madrid. But what I'm trying to say is, a lot of people are having a go at the Arsenal board because they didn't get Allegri. Yeah. Right? Now we see the difficulty in trying to get somebody like Allegri. That you've got a team that's just won Champions League three times in a row, mm -hmm. the biggest club in the world, and he's deciding to stay at Juventus. Mm. So that means he weren't going to go anywhere. Like I said, no, so, I, I just think that with Madrid, I think that Allegri's looked at it and thought, wow, if this doesn't go right, I could ruin everything. It's that big a pressure cooker. You know, um, from what I was hearing from Madrid fans as well, and some of the rumours is about Guti. That's mm -hmm. a name that's being mentioned. Yep. Um, and they're very traditional in that sense because you look at Zidane, former player. Mm. Guti's a legend in, in Madrid's... Um, there you go, there you again, again. He scored maybe, against us. He maybe, scored against us in that Legends game as well. Maybe we should have got Arteta. Nah, I, you know what, the, 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 resources, the resources and the infrastructure at Real Madrid are completely different to Arsenal and I think that um, taking over the Arsenal job and the rebuilding that we've got to do is a bit different to Real Madrid, mm. a bit different yeah, and a it's, different. you know, like I said, it's from what I'm gathering from the streets and from the people of Madrid themselves, yeah, we went into like, um, we went, went into this like restaurant which is actually in the Bernabeu. Um, and you've got like a bar and the restaurant. The restaurant actually overlooks the Bernabeu, the pitch and everything. Um, and there were some people in there and we were just sitting down having something to eat and drink and whatnot. And there was people and talking and the whole subject is over who's going to take over. And like I said, I haven't found anyone that was going, yeah, I'll take Arson. I'll be happy with that. They're all there going like, and because we were in town, that was a lot of the talk because mm. it's like, is he as bad as you make out? Is it like, and I'm like, boy. So you weren't giving him a very good reference? No, because if it, if it was Arsene Wenger from 15 years ago, I'd be saying, listen, you're getting one of the best managers in world football. The guy's a genius. Simple facts. 15 years ago, right now, you've got a man that I feel that's just tactically inept. You never know, man. He might be, uh, you know... He might be, might be the perfect job for him.
Maybe. Just goes in and says to those great players, express yourself. And they do. He said so, it, it, he told great players in the Invincibles to express themselves and they couldn't win the Champions League. Yeah, but he's got even greater players now. You know what I mean? He's got greater players at his disposal if he was to get that job. Oh, you look at their squad and you compare them to our Invincible players at that time, at their peaks. Obviously, Ronaldo's just... Well, come on, man. They've got a great he's, squad. Man. I know, but <laughs> Thierry Henry in his peak. Robert Pires in his peak. Patrick Vieira in his peak. Yeah? You look at Real Madrid's midfield and you've got Cruz and um, the, the, Modric <laughs> and stuff. I know, I know, but listen. Those are some wonderful players. I know, players. I know, but. Cruz and but Modric. What I'm saying to you, Bale. But what I'm saying to you, yeah. Ronaldo. No, I said Ronaldo is a different. Ramos. Bale. Sol Campbell in his peak at Arsenal and what he won. No, I can't compare to Ramos. No, but I'm saying he's up there. You know what I mean? Vieira. He's, he's up there, he's not quite there. Ramos. Right? Vieira. Could have walked straight into the... A prime yeah, Vieira... Like Casemiro is a, a, a very, prime, very... A prime Vieira would go into that Madrid side. Casemiro is a, a very, prime Henry, very good player. A prime Henri, is he better than Bale? Yeah, yeah. But so Bale's, what I'm saying is... But that goal that Bale scored... Bale's won Champions... Bale scored winning goals in two Champions League finals now. I know, but what I'm that, saying to you Thierry is... Thierry Henry never did that. I mean, but that's saying, But he has won the Champions League with Barcelona. Yes, and, and he's won a World Cup. Yeah, but ooh, he didn't really play much of a part in that World Cup win, did he? What I'm saying is, is we um, had uh, we had a serious side. So have they? Yeah, no, I'm not denying that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm saying yeah, that our the, Invincibles, uh, our Invincibles doesn't compare to their team. We were, I'm we, sorry. were serious. we were I serious. I love their side. Invincible team, but it doesn't compare to that Real Madrid team. They've won it three Champions League three times in a row. Yeah, you can't compare to that. No, team. no, it's and a lot of it's down to the manager. Unbelievable. He's been team. unbelievable. But what I'm saying is, I just anyway, instead of us dreaming about think. instead of us dreaming about Real Madrid and that, what nah. about us? Now, transfer uh, window. Uh, Stefan Lichsteiner. Yes. I'm happy. Excited? Yeah, I'm happy. Inspired? It's not an inspiring signing in a sense. Listen. Excited. Hey, let's uh Look. We already knew that going into this window Welcome, there, there was Stefan uh, Lichsteiner. There was an area that we've got to address. We have to go and fix Wenger's mistakes. It's 34 as as year old. Right. The exciting signings that are going to get you off your seat and make you go, wow, are those creative midfielders and strikers, the wingers and stuff like that. They're the ones. Mm. We did that already when we signed the Bamiyang and players like that. We've done that with the likes of Ozil, with Lacazette. We've got those players. Okay. We're at a position now where there's only a handful of names that will get you seriously excited in terms of defenders. If you were to say Kudabale, then you're going, Oi, yeah. I'm buzzing. You know? Arsene Wenger neglected the right back position for years, left Hector Bellerin on his own. Well, Debuchy no was there. I know. Experience. But, Experience player. But what I'm saying is, he sold him. Yeah, but he was there. But he sold him and left Hector to run as a right back on his own for half a season. The only pressure that Hector Bellerin had was Callum Chambers or Maitland-Niles. Neither are right-backs. So there was no pressure. Hector knew that he was going to play every single week. What Licksteiner brings us is experience. Seven La Ligas in a row. Swiss captain. Doesn't play like a 34-year-old. Seven Serie A's in a row. Se yeah, mm. what did I say? La Liga. Because oh, yeah. we were just talking about Madrid. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. Um, Serie A's. Um, Swiss captain. Doesn't play like a 34-year-old. Right? Prime example of him. Allegri brought him on to change the game against Spurs at Wembley. Right? In the 60th minute. By the 66th, they were two one up from being 1-0 down. He was one of the reasons why they turned it round. Remember Harry Nutmeg uh, Davis for um, Higuain's first goal? He was a part of that. He was the reason why Tottenham's wing-backs went back. He was a part of that. So don't tell me he ain't got the energy or the legs. Is he going to be first choice? Probably not, no. Energy but in will the legs. he... Energy in the legs for 30 minutes? No. But 90 minutes? You said he'd come on in the 60th minute. Yeah, I know. But that's, that was the legs choice. But he still yeah, but played... Yeah, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? He still he's played nearly week, 40 not games. Week in, week he still out, played man. nearly 40 games this season. Not starting. No, but he still started a majority of the games. He still played a lot of games. 
and he has like I said he's a Swiss captain go watch him in yeah, the World no, Cup no, he's a, he, he'll play 90 minutes he easy is a, he is a top player he'll he play 90 minutes and what he'll do is but 34 what he'll do is, is he'll push Hector right he never cost us a penny so yeah. it's so it's what a coincidence so it's not a normal uh, Arsenal signing no, but it's not a gamble free it's not a gamble right what we needed to fill that position we need to keep our powder dry for other areas yeah what about going out there and buying a proper exciting right back that well the thing is we spending need, a bit of time right, listen, why, why we need always, to why is it always going to be free right we need to we need to give Hector the chance to prove himself this season and we've got that exciting right back because I remember Hector when he burst on the scene I don't criticise him because I hate him or because he said things about Arsenal fan TV I criticise him because he's played shit and that's as simple as that that's the only reason why but the Hector that burst on the scene one of the best fullbacks in the country. Yeah, you I know? agree. So maybe under Was. another man, maybe yeah. un maybe under another manager, another Might manager that can actually summer. he's Spanish as well. You know, and could bring that best out of him. And we have to give it that se this season to see whether you can get it out of him. Giving him the number two shirt, so there's a little incentive already. You're taking over from some serious number twos at the club. So go out there and wear it. And go and do some, you know, because if he turns into the Hector from three years ago that burst mm. on the scene, we've got an exciting right back. We've got that. Just like a need. new signing. Yeah. This but is at, something we used to hear over But at the, the end of the day, if, if Wenger was still here. If Arsene Wenger was still here and he'd have signed Le Steiner. There's a total difference, and I said this yesterday. If Arsene Wenger was I, I made this here comment, and he would have I made this comment on your Le video yesterday. What would you have said? I made this comment on your video already. All right, I made this comment. What would you say? Arsene Wenger has been shopping in a bargain basement for years. What's this? Years and years and years and years and years. Every year he does it. He neglects areas. He doesn't spend money that's available to him. Bought a Bamia. Yeah. But that's it. Bought Lacazette. But that's it. But he's still... If Arsene what Wenger would have listen, signed listen, Steiner, listen, what would listen, you have said? Listen. Arsene Wenger neglects areas. He can go and buy an Aubameyang, but he fucking forgot about the defence. He can go and buy a Lacazette, but he forgot about the central midfield. He went out and bought Petr Cech and never bought anyone else. So what I'm saying is, is that Emery's literally just come in. He has to repair... No, I agree. ...the damage that's but done. I'm saying now, to you. Now, right, listen. We're not Man City. We can't go... I, We'll give you 50 million for a right back, we'll give you 50 million for a left back, we'll give you 50 million for a centre back, we'll give you 50 million for a goalkeeper, we'll give you 50 million for a defensive midfielder. We're going, right, this is what we've got. You've got to improvise a little bit here. Now, Change the reason why there's so much surgery is because of Wenger's mismanagement. Changed a lot, no. No, all you're of a sudden, fool, man. All of a sudden, you what know what I mean? You're, about? You're, you're giving... You know, the new guy's getting so much... Because he's yeah, a new yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't no, been hold here. On, hold on. He's not been here hold five on, minutes. All, all of a sudden now, you know, you, you're giving all of this... Uh, showing a lot of patience and giving all this time. Venga had I patience. You know, we, Venga we had can't patience. afford to go out there and spend this. Listen, and, and we got Venga to give had you, patience. Um, Steiner. If Venga would have signed no, Lich Steiner, you're you are getting it wrong. You'll be the first man. You be coming here and you be right. like, "What is going on?" Venga, Why have signed Venga had a long enough. Venga guy? had long enough. Venga had patience. Venga had all the time in the world to address the the situation that was done. And what the problem was as fans was was that no matter who he was buying, we were getting worse as a team. He's neglected ne Meza Özil. Right, go look at Germany and how he plays for them because you build around him. Right, he's got better players he around him in Germany. He neglected Meza Özil for years before he eventually went. Oh, you know what? I'll give you Lacazette and Aubameyang. After years of neglecting, he's neglected key areas season after season. When was the last time we went into a season and we've been ready? When was the last time we went into a season? But what was I'm saying, no, 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 because right, I'm going to Yes, we this know is what I'm saying. Historic, so the new manager comes in, as fans, we're looking at it and going, right, this is what Wenger's done wrong and what needs addressing with the team. The new manager's not going to be able to come in and fix that overnight. What about, what about this? What about this? The new manager's coming in and now we're starting to see the problems Wenger had. That this board don't want to spend the proper money to give the people, to give the manager 
the proper resources in able to challenge for the league. Because again, we're going to find as out. I said, if Wenger would have bought Lichsteiner, everybody would be cussing. And now, again, you, see, you know, Unai Emery's coming. And again, the resources are so limited that he's having to go and get a 34-year-old on a free I don't contract. Believe it's that. So again, no. we're starting to. See, are we now starting to see the real reasons? Like I said to you in another oh, podcast. Hold on, hold on, let me just finish. We'll find out. Are we starting to see the real reasons now why <laughs> the performances and that, and why we've been falling? Because we just don't spend the right amount of money to bring in the right type of players that we need. We're looking at Liverpool. Liverpool have bought Fabinho, they're buying Fakir, they bought Naby Keita, the, the levels of players that they're buying, and we're buying, you know, uh, Man United have bought Fred, you know, £50 million. Pounds. We've already got our attack. We're buying Licksteiner. We've already on got a free, our attack. Right, on a free... We have already right, got we're, our we're attack. We're operating a bit like you'd see teams like a West Ham, or that, you know, as a bargain bucket, free transfers, stuff like that. Cheaper players. No. Now, if you if no. you're gonna win the league, you've got to get the right players. You've got to be mm. spending the right type of money, and we now seeing what Wenger had to go through. Robbie, the fact no, that the money no, weren't there. No, right. Like I told you, we don't. Hector's the first choice right back, so we're not going to go spending 30, 40, 50 million on another a right back because we've got the right back. We need someone to cover him. And we need someone that can help him and be give him experience. Being a performer like that under Pep Guardiola, do you think he'd still be there? Probably or not. Pep Guardiola said, yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll we'll sell you and we'll but bring Pep in somebody. But Pep would have been able to spend 50, 60 million on another one. Just like he did with the keepers and exactly with the full So I'm saying. So what I'm saying, so I'm yo, saying but we're never going to have Man City's money. I'm we not never saying, are. Right, maybe not Man City, but other clubs yes, but of, what similar, I'm saying is, of similar but what stature I'm saying and is, size. We can still like spend, Liverpool. we can still spend a couple of hundred million. 150 to 200 million, we can but still the talk spend is that. 50 million. But what you've got to remember is Liverpool. 200 million with. Liverpool are going for their attack area, right? We've already done ours. No. Apart from. Naby Keita's not attack. He's a Fabinho's not, he's a defensive midfielder. No, no, the midfield and attack area. That's what I'm saying. That area. We're, we're sorted, apart from the defensive midfielder. No, no, Maybe hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Liverpool needed a defender. They went and spent £75 million, pounds, right, on what they deem to be the best centre-back out there in Virgil van Dijk. We're looking at bringing in Socrates for £19 million, right? This is what I'm trying to say. If they bought in Fabinho, £50 million. Listen, right they're now... They're looking at bringing in Naby Keita. Uh, sorry, sorry. They're bringing in... Um, uh, Fekir probably. Listen. £50 million again. Listen, Lacazette, right? Lacazette gave Fekir a career, man. Please. No, Fakir's a brilliant player. Yeah, he had a great season last year. Well done. Yeah, Lacazette, Lacazette gave wasn't, you, he Lacazette was gonna, wasn't he was there gonna, last be, season. He was going to be sold in 2016 if it wasn't for fucking Lacazette. Lacazette weren't there last season. If it wasn't for Lacazette, Fakir's he would have been sold in 2016. No, no, no. Fakir's, Simple as that. Yeah, Fakir, one good season. Fakir's had a Still great season. Still got to prove himself in the Premier League. Same as Keita. Yeah. Same as... Of course um, they've got to all prove themselves in the Premier yeah, exactly. League. But what I'm saying is they're buying quality because Fakir is one of the best players in the Listen, French League last year. we need to year. address... Fakir... Fakir has just broken into the French national we need team. To, We're going to see him in the World to, Cup. He's a top player. We need to address our... We're buying Lichsteiner. I'm hearing that he's injured. We're buying Lichsteiner. I heard, I heard that he's failed a medical. Whatever it is, we look... never know. Whether he fails a medical well, listen, or whatever... Listen, listen, listen. I'm just saying... We need to address... Look... We the, need just to address... Before, just right, before you tell me his address, right? Look where they're shopping. They're shopping at Waitrose. You don't we're know where we're shopping Lidl. yet. No, you don't know where we're at shopping At the moment, yet. what I'm seeing is Lidl. Yeah, you can see it a little. You can't turn around and tell me that a guy that's won the amount of trophies that Lick Steiner has is Lidl. 34 years of age. No, 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 no. You're when, right. All right, when Slatten signed free, for Manchester United. Free transfer. When Slatten signed for Manchester United, were people looking at his, his age and stuff like that or going and looking at what he's won? Yeah, sometimes players defy their age. And I Whoa. looked at this guy and he is exactly like that. So at the end of the day, we were sitting there when Slatan side for Man United going, why didn't we get him? He would have been great for us. Why didn't we get him as well? He was a free transfer. He was 33, 34 years True. old. So the same thing. I'm saying though, Licksteiner, right? Licksteiner's won it. You can't turn around and tell Socrates, me that a man that's won... This is not the top listen, end of what you we're cannot tell at. me that a man that's won seven uh, Serie A's in a row is Lidl. 
No chance. No, 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 uh, no. He's no, free no. transfer. Yes, he's a free he's transfer. Saying, yeah, but I told you, he's a second a choice. He's perfect. Thing, you know, he's yeah. perfect for what we need. Second choice, like you said, I, right? I, so yes, that's because we saying. need it. Because we're not going right, to... And right. if we've got the opportunity of getting someone so experienced for free that can come in and help yeah. Hector, who is our first choice, and to help and do everything... Listen, it's, come on, yeah, man. What makes, I'm saying, it's not the It's a no-brainer. It's, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's a no-brainer. It probably is a no-brainer, yes, but it's not your high level. It's not the, you know... It's not a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer. Why didn't none of the other big Because we were in there first. And plus, yeah. they all don't need it. Most players have got it's their position the sorted out. Thing. And then Socrates, again, it's not... That's not Waitrose. I mean, that's... Yeah, there's a big name coming. It's, it's, yeah, there's a yeah, big yeah, name coming. There's one big name coming. Hold on. There's a big name coming. Socrates again, you know what I mean? It's not... Look, as I said, Liverpool ain't got Van Dyke. And you just said about Koulibaly and that. Those are... Yeah, who's to Socrates... Don't who's get to me wrong, I think... Get Socrates and Koulibaly? Socrates, who's to say we're not going to buy another defender Socrates as well? A positive, Socrates a positive signing because he's uh, a centre-half. We need centre-halves. It's not we've the, got to trust. Know, we're we, not listen, to jumping listen, up listen. down and saying, yeah. Listen, we've got to trust Ben. We've got to trust him. We've got to trust the scouting. We've got to trust him. You're trusting because, everybody now? Well, I've always trusted Sven. Yeah. He's only been here a year, okay. less than that. Now, when, when he signed Mavropanos, and we all looked at him and went, what the fuck is this kid, man? Well, uh, watched him a couple of games. Mm. And yeah, he's still he no, learning again. and got the naivety. Yeah, of course no, he will at that age. But in the couple of other times that I've seen him, you've seen enough there to go, you know what? It's got potential. Few years, yeah, they, this, this boy could be something. So you've got to trust Sven. You're and right, then you look you're at his right. Track Listen, I, I agree with you, but I want to see as well some top yes, level. Yes, we all do. Top level players, do. man. These guys, you know what I mean? Potential. We all do. We all do. Uh, wait, wait, you know wait, I, mean? I want to see some top level. What is it? Look at this, right? It's the 8th of June. We've got. Two months until the window, like the start of the season. Why, why did he never used to show this patience before? Because because he never used to do anything. But what I'm trying to say to you, are we've seen now that oh, it weren't I... just Wenger, the board, they're not giving... He had Unai, money. Do you think if Unai Emery, right, had 200 million to spend, for instance, he'd get Licksteiner? Do you honestly think that? Yeah. I don't. I do, because I, I think he's going to go and spend the money on areas I don't. that I are think, more I think, important. Because I think then maybe what he'd be saying, I'm going to bring in a top, top level right back. And no, because yeah, in, his, wait, mind, wait minute, no, because in his mind, he might see Hector as a top level right wait a minute, back. Wait a minute. You don't know that. He might see no, Hector. No no, 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 but hold on. I think he'd be, this is my, you've got your opinion on it, I'm giving you okay, my opinion on, on it, that if he had 200 million to spend, he might be looking and go, yeah, you know what, there's some brilliant right backs out there, man. I'm going to go and bring in a top level. No. You, Hector Bellerin, you, if you want that space, you're up against now a top level young right back that will no. check, and if you don't like it. I know, I don't think he would. I think he'll, he'll concentrate on other areas. That, uh, is need, Hector Bellerin that need... a top-level right-back? Yes, as well. he is. Is he? He can be. I watched him for the first couple of years, and he was. He was the best in fucking is Europe. Up in... <laughs> one of the best in Europe. The best in Europe. You haven't One enough. of. He was one, up and coming. One of. He was up and coming. One of. I don't know about that, man. He was. He was seriously good, man. He was man. an up-and-coming player. Yes, he was, he was doing up and coming, really, but really but well. He was, really he was progressing good. nicely, but to say he was top-level... He was coming up. He was yes, and what I'm saying is, I feel that Emery has seen enough there to go, yeah, I can work with that. It's either, I can get him up. No, he's so it's spending either, the money it's one of It's one of the two. It's, it's either he's seen it and said, oh, there's potential there, or he's like, well, I can't afford to really replace Hector. We'll find out, won't we? Because I haven't got the funds, so find all out, I can we? do is bring in Lichstein and hopefully... Find what? out, won't we? No, but this is what I'm trying to say find to out, you. Find out, won't we? What I'm trying to say to you is, are we starting to see the fact that the man or, and, and the previous no, manager because it's and this manager no, have not got the right amount of money to spend? it's June the 8th. It's June the 8th, Robbie. We've got two months until the season starts and I've seen us more active in this window than any other window we've been in. You can see which rumours are now, real the start and which of the, ones at the start are not. Of a, the start of last year's window, we bought Lacazette. Hmm? Wasn't Sorry. right at the start. Huh? Wasn't yes, right it at the was. start. It no, was, it wasn't. It was, it, was well, a week, it was a week before the uh, pre-season tour. 
No, but we, you know, the whole Lacazette thing was going on. And everyone was like, oh, this is fantastic. And then after yeah, that, Yeah, but we look didn't when it much. got sorted. What I'm saying is, is but, that that was it. And then it mm. was like, at the end of the day, that you was a got, week before the tour. I'm not sure if I've got the full confidence yet. I, I, I have to be, um, and I, this is not on Unai Emery. I, I, I've said right from the beginning, I like and the yet, appointment. You see I, that breaking news, that the FA have announced approval of a two-week Premier League mid-season player break. I really, I, um, I, that wasn't breaking news because I actually, in uh, February. I broke that news last night. Did you? Yeah. Oh. Uh, so. <laughs> I don't watch your videos unless I'm and I, and I also, on Transfer Daily, I broke that this morning again. Did you? Yeah, I, don't I, did, watch that I did it. On, I did it on a UFF. I video can't deal. Night. I can't deal with you, man. Hi, and welcome to Transfer <laughs> Daily, the show. Because it's just like, oh god, here we Thanks go again. Support. No worries, man. And, uh, I, 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 I watch Transfer Daily uh, when we sign someone because I like to see the smile on your face. I like the smile on your face. The sort of players we're getting linked to, right? No. We're not getting linked to the top end players. No, this because is you know what you should be doing. You know what you should be doing. Should be texting me that shit. <laughs> I want to hear that shit before everyone else hears it. And uh, and and uh, and the other thing is like another player we've been linked to in Zonzi. Yeah. Right. What do you think of that? I'd be happy. I've called his name for how long? You know I have for twenty nine long though. time. Twenty nine. Experience is what we need right now. We need that experience. We've got to steady that shit for the next again, couple of uh, years. You know, I, I, again, I, listen, if we get on Zonzi, I wouldn't be... I'm, I'm not going to say I'd be unhappy it, with it, that. If I had I, to I, make I, a choice... He's got a presence, uh, it, uh, hold on, presence in midfield in that. But again, is that the top? Liverpool have got Fabinho, right? Young, highly, highly rated defensive midfielder in Europe. We're thinking of getting Steven in Zonzi. 29. That's what I'm saying. Again, cheaper option. This is just the thing that's worrying me at the moment. It's not a much of a cheaper stopped. option. It's still 30 odd million. 29. Um, Fabinho's 50 million. Be higher wages, mm. right? So it's a bigger investment and you're buying a young player for the future. I'm saying in Zonzi, I wouldn't be against it. Don't get me wrong. If you sign in Zonzi, I, I, I'd have to say I'm happy because we've never addressed that defensive midfielder mm -hmm. area. But should we be going in for a younger guy there, which will, get, of course, will cost a lot of money? Right. And I just no, no, see no, 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 that all no, the players we no, seem to be no, linked no, with are no, bargains. No, no, uh, no, because it is not a bargain, right? The thing with Inzonzi, the thing with Inzonzi, is that right now what Emery needs as well is people he knows and trusts, right? Not just around him, but also if he can get some players in that he knows well, and he trusts them, and they trust him. 29. Then that buys into the project. Obviously, he was um, manager with Nzonzi at Sevilla. Won trophies with him at mm -hmm. Sevilla. So that is, someone, that is someone he obviously trusted at Sevilla. Yeah. A few years ago, though. 29 um, again. Listen, again, you're still going to get a good four years worth out of him. Now, if that gets us back in the Champions League and challenging, then that's a, piece of, a good piece of business. Now, the other name that's being mentioned there, of course, is Decora from Watford. Decora, yeah. yeah um, I like him. Good player. Younger player. Mm -hmm. could, that might cost a bit more. There's a, a Harder to do, but, can, you know. But he's 25, isn't he? Fellaini's being mentioned. Nah, piss off, man. Don't even mention his name around me, man. Don't even go there. Why? Listen, I Experience. Want, listen, the banter season is finished. I don't need this shit. Did you not tell me? Do you understand you, what did you much, just say? No, I'm not. Not Fellaini. I don't want that sideshow bog motherfucker anywhere near our team. Seriously, <laughs> don't get me started Why? on it. I will get fucking bantered off by Man United fans left, right and centre. So it's only for your own self No, it's not mine. It's Arsenal full stop. Man United fans, yeah? They're literally, they're, they're packing him and trying to send him to Arsenal. The only one at Man United that likes him is Mourinho. He wants to build his fucking team around him. He's a good impact player though. He's a plan B. No, 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 He's a no, plan B. no. If he signs for Arsenal, I'll pull out a banner straight away. <laughs> Fucking Fellaini, get the fuck out. I don't want Sideshow. He's a plan B. I don't want Sideshow Bob anywhere near our club. If you want a plan B, B fucking sign Giroud back. Do not bring any that thing anywhere near our club. No, no. Remember when they played against us? I can't care less. He came on. He came on. He changed the game. He created havoc. Bruv. He created havoc. He scored care. the winning goal against us. I don't us. want that prick anywhere near our club. Please uh, yeah, do I not get know, him man. anywhere he's, near. He's, he's an impact player. We could do with an impact player. No. You want an impact player? Bring me on for five he'll minutes. Add a bit, he'll add a bit of steel I'll to that midfield. I'll add a bit of steel. Add a, <laughs> no, you just be, be, want to fight everybody. That's steel? Right? No, he's, he, he'd add a bit of steel to that midfield. No! No! 
No, no, no. Let's do a poll. <laughs> do you want the lady at Arsenal? <laughs> no, no, no. So you're having Zonzi, all those guys, but you don't want Fellaini? No. Only because he was at Man United. No, dinner. because he's shit. You're going to get bantered off. He's shit. Ask Flex I bet about you him. Any money, I bet you any money when he was at Everton, you wanted him. <laughs> Holy shit. When he was at Everton, did you want him at Arsenal? I can't remember. Be honest now. He was decent at Everton. Every Arsenal, we need to get Fellaini. That's what we need in the midfield. I'm not Pierce Morgan, we need you know. steal. Remember we used to I'm say... I love Pierce Morgan, you know. A lot of Arsenal fans listen, used to say that. No, but listen, no, no, no. Flex even rang me I'd the like other day. I'd like to dig into your you know, tweets. You know what? Flex rang me. And I'm sure I'd find out. A... When, when Fellaini was at Everton, my account was suspended, so you can't get <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to speak to one of you guys on Twitter. Man's covered. But um, well, listen. Dig, I know that listen. you would have been there bigging up Fellaini somewhere. Fe hey, listen. Flex rang me the other day, yeah? <laughs> He was like, please take Fellaini. I'm going to banter you so hard if you take... He's shit! No! I'd He's rather, not as bad as people I'd rather Wenger come back than sign Fellaini. He's not as no. bad as people are saying. I'm not having that. Not having it. Not having it. No, no, no. Let's keep on to Decorey. Let's talk about him. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a player from Watford I spoke to about him a while ago. And yeah, he would fit the mould at Arsenal, but it's getting him from Watford. Again, why is it hard to get Decorey from Watford? We're at Arsenal Football no, Club. No, we could just That's go, what I'm we, saying. We could Are take you not it, worried about this? No, Are you we, not could looking at this? we should go over the fence and just take it. Are you not looking at this and saying to yourself that nothing's really changing as far as when it comes to spending on players? This is what... I don't know. I think a lot of people at the moment are overlooking this because we've got a new manager in. I'm looking at it on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm saying, yo... I still want to see what the, you know, I'm taking Una Emery out of it a second and I'm looking at our board and what are you giving the guy to spend? We were and I'm not you seeing, know what? I said that we were at the moment, to. I'm not seeing the signs that they are giving him and Miss Lintat and these you, guys you know the, problem. the right amount of funds. We're not buying you, you know the problem at the top table we're not sitting we're not buying those top line players at the moment well, we're looking to buy those what, little secondary from what they're guys saying, from what they're saying Sven wants De Curry and Emery wants Nzonzi right now we can go and get Eva the funds are there to do it they're there so it's not about not having the funds they're there yeah. it's about who decide who gets the overall say who gets it? Will Emery get the overall say? Will he go, OK, I trust your judgment on this, we'll go with him? Or does Emery get the overall say where he says, look, I know him, worked with him for this many years, and apparently from what the rumours are saying is that he's convinced Fenn that he's a good, a good yeah. fit. If we get to Corey, what happens to Wilshire? Is that the end of Wilshire? There's links linking him to West Ham, Crystal Palace. There was uh, the other day on his well, profile. Curry's defensive it, midfielder, like a yeah, yeah, but it did still be midfielder. a deep line player that would probably with Jack's probably playing a bit deeper now. Is with, that the end of Jack? I don't think it is. I think Jack can be more of the creator. More for he's got a lot of competition to fight with. We still don't know what's happening with Ramsey and whether he's signing. Um, Jack, what is he still an Arsenal player till the end of June, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Technically, but he can. Mm. announced to sign for someone because like yeah. Licksteiner he announced he's Arsenal but mm. he can't be released by Juventus until the end of the month I mean um, Jack is it, I saw something I, 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 he took, I took Arsenal off his profile yeah, and he, things like that he never took that off his profile it's not been there since he was at Bournemouth right alright I checked that shit I still well, he, he, uh, Instagram he, he said uh, yeah I know new chapter. that new, new chapter you can take that either way new chapter you can club. do either way I want, so. I want Jack Wilcher to stay I do it's not looking like it at the moment, though. No, it isn't. I'll be gutted if he if he goes because I do I like him, man, and it's not just because I talk to him, but it's. And again, it's... are they giving the right money? Are they offering the right deal? Well, to... apparently he's going to sit down with money short apparently again. Apparently he's going to sit down with um, Emery next week. That's what they're saying. Emery's back from his break, his holiday, he gets to work, and there might be a World Cup on, but he's going to be back to work. He's going to be doing what he has to do. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. We'll wait and see. Um, what do we do with Danny Welbeck? You see, last night he scored. Wait and see. Wait and see if he's had a really he's got good, one year left on his contract. What I'm saying is, wait and see if he's had a brilliant World Cup and then fuck him off. Sell him. Get loads of money for him. Hopefully, he has an amazing World Cup and we can get loads of money. Why? Why do you want to sell him for? Because he's shit. This is, uh, see, I disagree with you on that. You would. I disagree with you on that. 
Because you would. Oh, I can't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you always bringing race into this thing, man? Because you always... You, 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 you hate all the up. white guys, man. Yeah, all right. Jack Wilson, <laughs> Jack Wilson's black, yeah? You, you always bringing race into this. You know what I mean? No, man. I know you've got the that. same initials as uh, Donald Trump, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? DT. You know Listen. What I mean? Listen. Let's make Arsenal great again. Welbeck, uh. right, can play on the right, can play on the left, can play down the middle. He's a squad player. He's not a starting player, but I think... I said to, on, on my transfer daily today, I think I'd be more than happy. We've got a Bamiyang, we've got Lacazette, Welbeck, and upgrade and uh, promote Enketia, right? Who's been scoring lots of goals all last season in the youth team. Scored for England twice, I think, the other night. No, I scored. Was uh, it a goal and, a, and goal a, an assist? assist? Give him a chance. And that's our four strikers. All right, ask me this. If, right, if Welbeck, Welbeck has a good World Cup. Welbeck for me is a good utility if, if, player. If Welbeck has a good World Cup, scores a couple of goals, great looks squad great, player. looks right, everything else, yeah. It's only one year left. He's not signing his new deal. And no, we if get he's our, not signing, and, and, and we get offered 25 to 30 million because he's had a good World Cup, yeah? You take that. It depends what we're going to buy. I worry with these guys. What would they replace Welbeck with? Can't do much worse. No, well, I just see. You, I don't think you're watching football properly. Then, if you say things like that, because you got a guy that man, you got a guy that can like play. You got a, you ice, got a guy that can play multiple positions across the front three. You've got a guy who's a good squad player. He's England and actually got a better goal scoring record for England than Harry Kane. Do you know that? Right. This this, this guy. Is right. He scored important goals this for is Arsenal. Arsenal. He he's not. We know he's not a Bamiyang. He's not Lacazette. But he's not going to start. But he's a guy that you can bring off the bench. He can. He works hard. He tracks back. I think he's a good squad player. I would be keeping Danny Welbeck in my team. From what I've heard um, from behind the scenes, he's a very liked player. He's a he's a team player. You know, not every one of your players has to be a Bamiyang who's going to bang in thirty odd goals. And you know what we're like with injuries. You know what we're like. We can start a season off. Lacazette can be out. A Bamiyang can be out. Yeah, you know I mean, we need. I, I would keep Welbeck. Obviously, if Welbeck was like saying, I don't want to sign and stuff like that, that's a different matter. And I think as well we should be signing him to a new contract before the World Cup. Because if he goes and has a blinding World Cup, and then we end up, you know, he ends up saying, oh, actually, I want to go, and we end up having to sell him on the cheap. Sign him up now. Ain't going to happen. You know, sign him up now. That's what my opinion. Ain't going to happen. Because if he doesn't have a good World Cup, we're stuck with him. He's delivered as much as Jack has in recent years. Hasn't he? It's poor. If we're being honest. Mm -hmm. Right, so I think good squad player, I'd be, I'd be looking to keep him. For 25 million, what are you going to bring in? Who can play, what, like I said, multiple positions across that front three. Who could you bring in to replace Danny Welbeck? So for me, I would keep him. That's not the problem areas up front there, right? Danny Welbeck as well can play as a, like a winger. Which I still think we need an out-and-out -out winger. That's yeah, another position we need to address. But Danny Welbeck can play right wing, left wing, right? So, mm. you know, I would definitely be keeping Danny Welbeck. But I want us to put big resources into finding a really... Good, why are we not going after someone like Amaris? Probably because of how much they Exactly, because of the amount of money he's going to Yeah, because this you're is going what, up against Man City. Are you not understanding no, what I'm no, saying? No, because you're going up against Man City with that one. And Man City All right, then go after somebody on. else who's as good as Morris. Who? That level. Who? Wilfred Zaha, somebody like that. <sighs> one of the other top wingers. I don't, I don't think you're getting much difference to Welbeck. Right? Wilfred Zaha, he's an excellent player. Right? Let's go after a top winger then, a top class winger. That's going to cost 50, 60 million pounds. We're getting Dembele, aren't we? Right? Well, there, there has been... Listen, if they pulled off somebody like that, then I'll be like, wow. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the plug said But so. at the moment, what are we pulling off? What are the sort of players that we seem to be linked with? You know? Just give it a bit of time. If we pulled off a Usman Dembele, I'll hold my hands up and say, brilliant. This, all right, now we're starting to do what, what I want to see us doing. But I'm just looking at it, I'm thinking, new managers coming in, back this guy, give him the funds. 
Don't be telling this new guy 50 million yeah, to rebuild know. a team we, that is getting worse. It was, it was not 50 million, but we don't know yet. 50 million, 70. You. Then I heard 70 million. That is not enough. Yeah, I know, but we a don't new know guy's yet. coming in, give him the funds to rebuild his team we don't so know that he can, bring in his, he can bring in the right players in the right areas yeah, I know that. that can make us like challenge again. You, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Well, man. the evidence. All I'm trying to say is that what I'm seeing at the moment, the evidence is pointing to the same type of signings that we've seen in recent times, which is basically it's not the... We're not shopping at the top level. We're buying those sort of mid we guys. just shopped at the top. We shopped at the top level when we bought Ozil. We shopped at the top level when we bought Bamiyan. It's a one-off signings, man. When we bought a Bamiyan, that was only because, right, um, you know... So you look, look at some of the recent signings we've got, right? Again, with Arsenal. This is what, you know, Lacazette. We only got Lacazette because Atletico Madrid had a, a transfer ban. He was going to Atletico Madrid. Still got him. We still got him, but we just moved in and we might think. We only got a Bamiyang because, uh, let's have it right, a lot of clubs didn't go for a Bamiyang. Real Madrid didn't go for him in the end. Various different clubs didn't go for him, right? And then how the sort of transfer window worked out with uh, Alexis moving out, we had the wages, we was able to pounce. Great signing, I'm, I'm happy with it. But when is it, when's the last time we ever went in for that top player and Ozil. pulled it off? Ozil. That was the last time. How many, when was, how many years has Ozil been at the club? Was it four Five. years? Five years? Five years ago. And so this is why I'm looking at it. I'm saying this is the pattern did, that I don't like. We did the same thing with Czech because at the time we were buzzing about signing him. On a free. But were you buzzing when we got Petr? Yeah, because we just never had a good goalkeeper exactly. for ages. So regardless right. of it being on a free. Yeah, but I'm just saying that I want to see us, you know, can't we go out there and spend some proper money for once? Yeah, well, we'll see, won't we? Well, we'll see. Yeah, let's just wait and see. I like you've got a lot of patience now. Yeah, you know I mean, I listen, like this. Listen, listen. If I if, like this. If by if by the time the preseason tour of Singapore comes around, the squad's still like you know all over the place, and we haven't addressed areas because the tour to Singapore's we play on the twenty sixth and mm. the twenty eighth of Something July, like and the season starts. Ninth, week tenth, and a half later, two 14th, weeks later. Like yeah. So if by then, because with a new manager, you would ideally want 80, 90% of your squad completed, the people from the players that went to the well, World Cup. Well, we've got Cup. to get them in early because the season, what, what's the cut handy, point is early. I know, but what's handy is we haven't actually got a lot of players going to the World Cup, only nine. Um, so the big chunk of our team will all be together. The likes of Lacazette, Aubameyang, will all go on the pre-season tour. We'll all be pre-season training under the new manager. So that integration side of things, Mkhitaryan as well, Aaron Ramsey, all these players are all going to be on the pre-season tour. They're all going to be mm. with Emery from day one. <gasps> um, so we need to have at least 80-90% of that team there, new player-wise. And then maybe in them last two weeks of the window before the start, Okay. You know, something drops in, but I want to see. You know, if, if for example, we go to uh, Singapore and we're sitting there going, "Boy, we've only bought Licksteiner and Socrates," I'll be fuming. I'll be taking balance to Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> the cronky out banner. Do you know what I mean? I'll be fuming. But nah, man, we, we just right, got to well, give it time. We just got yeah, to. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm being as nice as who I can. Would you, who would you like to see? Just one big signing. Kudabali. If you can make one big sign. Kudabali, defensive wise, I've said his name for a long time, and he's what is he? Six foot four, absolute beast of a player, beast. And he's what fifty million something around the March, 50, 60? No, I think when the you, other day... Has he got a release no, clause? No, I can't, no, 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 I'm trying to think if he's got a release clause. Napoli said the other day they wouldn't take anything less than 80 million. See, they've seen now yeah. what Van Dijk will. Yeah, well, so there you go then. So, you know, he's he's a big name that would get you off mm. your seat in defensive Never, ever going to happen. We're um, going to pay 80 yeah, million. Yeah, and then, um, you know, goalkeeper-wise, it's never going to happen, but a name that would excite you is O'Black. Um, but never going to happen because that's an 80, 90 million release as well with him. Um... Leno's an interesting one. 
Yeah, that's a he's, possibility. He's a good keeper as well. Mm. Done really well in, in um, Bundesliga, and he's a highly rated goalkeeper. So that's that's one. And the the club have actually came out and said that they've got a replacement for him already, and he will be going. Yeah, he's definitely going. So he, it's to wherever he goes to. Mm. Um, if we're going to add a winger, then the obvious is Dembele. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I don't think we'll be buying him. I think the options that they're talking about are loan with the option to buy. Um, but I think a lot of it depends on whether Griezmann goes to Barcelona, but I'm hearing Griezmann ain't going now. So that's probably dead in the water. So a Riyad Mahrez, that would excite me. That would excite me. A Wilfred Sahar wouldn't excite me. It honestly wouldn't. Um, so they're the kind of names that you're looking at. Um, and Zonzi, fill up that defensive midfield area. I'd be happy with that. I've said his name for a long time. I watched what he did to Manchester United in the Champions League with a much worse squad around him than what we've got and how he just nullified Manchester United and just sat there and bossed that midfield. And we've been missing that for how long? Years. Since Vieira days. Okay. So, okay. you know, at the end of the day, I'd be an idiot if I go into this season already mm. being negative and stuff like that. I want to change. I've got change. So let's just sit back and Have just see. Have you got see. change? Manager-wise. Yeah, that's what I'm no, saying. That's what I mean. Manager -wise. Yeah, so I'm saying that bit's happened. Have we so got now, We're going to find out if we've got yeah, change. Yeah, exactly. So what you do now is you sit back and say, right, let's let, manage change. Let's go and see what the board do now. Okay. You've lost your protective shield. So let's see whether it's Wenger all along you all along or a combination of both and we go and let's see because emery's got a half decent squad there you okay know? i don't know if i i think i've had a chance to ask you this year about who do you think is going to win the world cup we're going to be swinging into world cup mode from next week the world cup starts mm -hmm. next week thursday over there in russia one team for um, me sorry one team for me one team for you who germany germany I just, I, 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 I just think I, that they are—they're are, yeah, are, yeah. just a well-oiled machine. They mm. are just. But France got a chance, though. France have got a chance because they're attack-wise. You know, mm. talk about Dembele, Mbappe, Griezmann, serious attack. Mm. You know. Um, you know another team that I think's got a great chance of winning it? Spain. Yeah, they have They've as well. Got They've got a very, great side. Very good. Do you know team. Who my underdog is? Who? England. Not to win it, but to cause a few problems. Now I know that with us before with what we're like we we sail through You're qualifiers to, do what? to to at least get to the quarters. Yeah, but I'm saying that no who, one, to no win one, it. No, no not to win it. I don't mean win it. Believe, behave yourself. Um, I think that I think the final will be between Germany and Brazil. No, I don't think Brazil will make it. I think that Brazil will. Brazil got a good team. Depends what Neymar's doing. Yeah, what, obviously. The underdog to possibly uh, win it. You know I don't, the, I don't think their defence... Do you know my outside-the-box team to win it is? One yeah. of the ones that's not in the names, like Spain, France and stuff like that. Portugal. Yeah. Because I don't know they what it Euros. is. I don't know what it is, but when Ronaldo turns it on, mm. everyone else seems to just... They won the Euros? You look at... They've got some quality players, Portugal. Don't get me wrong. But they've not got serious, world-class players in positions like your Francis have, like your mm. Germany have, like Spain has. But Ronaldo's that kind of guy mm. that when he steps to 110%, he takes these players that maybe only be about 70, 80 mm. to 90 that to 100. Belgium. They're a dangerous side. Got good players, man. They're a dangerous side. But, but again, have they really got anyone that's going to go... Hazard? Never done it on the big stage, though. De Bruyne. What I'm saying, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They've got to come forward. You look at Argentina, right? Messi, this is, for me, his biggest World Cup. Because he will, he, Argentina will always get compared um, to the Diego Maradona era. Yeah, I feel and Messi sorry. Will always I feel get sorry, compared. For, sorry for Messi, because going forward, Argentina, brilliant. Obviously, him, Aguero... Yeah. Uh, and Icardi Bala. can't even get in the team. Icardi can't get in the team. Because Dybala. of Messi. The only problem with them is their defence is absolutely shocking. shocking, mate. It's like, it's as bad as Arsenal's. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Uh, their defence is so poor, they've got absolutely no chance I'm, of winning I'm, the World I'm Cup. looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing some players out there. I'm looking forward to seeing how Mo Salah performs in the World Cup after his season. Mm. Um, and it'll be a big stage for him. And uh, be I think that arm uh, thing, I think that shoulder thing's gonna 
So but I, I do think that it's maybe another, he's, it's another sort of Beckham. Yeah, stroke. I do think that maybe he's going into it not a hundred percent, and it's because it might be his only chance of ever playing a World Cup. Yeah. And he got Egypt there. It's got to go, but you know. But if he ain't there, then you know the best mo in the Premier League will be there. You know, <laughs> El Nini. El Nini. <laughs> no, I mean, Mohamed El Nini. Boy, number four for Arsenal. Can you believe he got number four? Gosh. Yeah, look at his face. <laughs> oh, he's a good squad player. Again, squad player. Do, I, do you know who I also think could be one of the players of the tournament? Who? Raheem Sterling. He's a good player. I like him and I hope he does as well to shove it down the throats of the media that have wrongfully picked on him over his tattoo and stuff and Pierce Morgan and people that have just... Listen, if the guy wants to tattoo a remembrance to his father which has a gun and stuff like that, let him, let him do it. Why a gun though, man? Because his dad was gunned down yeah, I know. and killed I know, when he was a kid. Still wire gun. Because he, 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 I, I, Listen, I, I, I do think the media... It resonates and what I he do says think the media he shoots with his right foot. Mm, I think the media, the media seized upon something and tried to make something no, worse. No, I'll tell you why the, see, worse, so what tell you why the media see, seized on part of it. Because he's black. That's why they see something like because a lot of them are racist. It's got something to do with it. And also, also the fact that he's always they're always picking on that guy. Always. Rhyme, Starling, Sterling. Always. Always, the, the man, always go, the, the man goes to Iceland, yeah, and it's such and such thousand pound a week uh, Man City player shops in Iceland. Well, hold on a minute. If he went to Waitrose, you'd be saying, why ain't he shopping at um, Iceland? Mm. Right? Guy goes to Primark. Hold on a minute. He started shopping in Harrods and whatnot. Mm. You'd start going, why is he not going to, well, too good for Primark clothes, are you? But man takes a flight back on EasyJet. You'd then start moaning if he was using yeah, it's private disgusting. jets. It's disgusting. Goes and gets but his sister only... a house. Yeah, I know that was the classic yeah? one. And then, because he looks after his mum. Yeah. And because he looks after his sister. At the end of the day, Robbie, right? I'll be perfectly honest here, yeah? If I was on his wages and a multi-millionaire, and I bought my mum and dad nice things, yeah, and my fam. I'd show it off. Some of those same people right in the stories would do the same thing. Exactly. As and a matter of fact, they're no, jealous. Do you the best one? They actually pictured him going into Manchester City's training ground, and his car was dirty. Yeah, they've just been disgusting. It's like the treatment of him and has been disgusting, and we do it every World Cup. We always yeah. finger with our players, and that's why they perform the so badly. Some, there's who's there's the always so much um, pressure on him. Who's the main paper behind it? That was the son that had that story, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, the main you know, ones so, it. But it's just... And it, but the I only thing you. I would say with Raheem Sterling with that, right, is that I... Why a gun? He I just look his, at it. Me, 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 I understand, uh, obviously, um, you know, my reasons. parents are Jamaican as well. I know what goes down in, in sometimes. Uh, and his, his, his dad getting gunned down, that's, you know... Who are we to, to comment on it, yeah. right? But I just feel that some t if you're going to put a gun there, that does... People are going to, with what's been going on in, in this country with all the gun and knife crime, it's going to come under scrutiny. People are going to be like, yeah, why? That question is going to be asked. Even if, even if he then, then answered, to me, what's the worst part of that thing is that once they came with his story, why didn't they ask him first before they made that big mm. story out of it? Why didn't they say, yo, Ryan Sterling, why you, why you got, with all what's going on at the moment, why you got a gun? Yeah. Well, the and, then when he, and then when he answered that, when he could, did address it, then they would have realised that, all right, we won't make a story out of it. But I'm just saying that by having a gun there, it does bring scrutiny but to it. But what I am saying because, as well. Because of the amount of gun crime, uh, and no, knife crime that. going around. But it's his body, do what you want. It's, it's, it, it does make, do it, it's a sensitive, and he's a role model. It is a sensitive issue because, you know, people are going to look on him and say, come on, man, you know, we've had kids. I don't, I don't, you, I don't are you glorifying it? I don't think But he did address people. it anyway. Yeah, he did. And at the end of the day, he had that tattoo done in August last year. Mm. Right? It's been on show before. And if you go and watch Manchester City celebrations and the mm. final game of the season, he had his socks rolled down. He was sitting there being pictured with a trophy with it clearly on show. Mm. And then the media decided no, to pick up on it. The World Cup's coming up now. No, they decided they to pick on it. it just for the World Cup. Yeah. Why? Because they're wankers. Yeah. And you yeah. wonder why no one gives a shit about the media anymore. Mm. There you go. It's a good way to end, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Um, we're going to be switching into World Cup mode as well. Um, talking about the World Cup. Yeah. Who do you, so who are you supporting in the World Cup? England. You're in Germany, right? No, I'm England, man. We'll see you walking around with a bloody Germany shirt on. Oh, uh, it's the one on the back.
Okay, all right, give you that then. You're cool. Yeah. All right. But, so we'll be getting all over the World Cup. We might, we, we'll be speaking to him a lot over the World Cup as well to find out what his opinions are. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to be doing some bits over the World Cup yeah. as well. There's going to be some funny bits as well. And I'm going to a few bars as well, um, which is in the process of being... Um, the production side of things is being sorted right. at the moment. Don't but get drunk. No, no, no. You know me. I don't drink, man. And my body's a temple. It might look like a, Buddha, a temple of a, you know, of a Buddha. Temple of but, Duke. <laughs> but um, no, there's, there's some there's some bits with that, um, obviously, which okay. you know that are going to be involved with UFF and stuff like that as well. And I know mm. that you'll be sharing stuff. And so yeah, there's some good projects there. And then World Cup ends within two weeks or something, isn't it? It goes so fast or something, no, isn't it? It's like three weeks. Three weeks, sorry. But it goes fast because you mm. have like four games, games every, in yeah. in like a day. Mm. It's like if you got a missus. She's going to hate you. <laughs> there's, uh, on the weekends, right, there's like three games in the day. <laughs> I mean, listen, the woman, the woman has to even re um, uh, plus record the um, Love Island because it's cutting into that. You know, I'm glad. I'm so glad I'm going to be over there, man, because I ain't going to have to have no issues regarding that. So You're I'm, just going to have issues with me ringing you. I'm going to be watching so much football. Robbie! So Robbie! I need this. We need to sort this out. This I mean, oh. You'll be blocking your number, that's for you sure. Know, I'll get another phone. Good trap phone. <laughs> just to ring you, man. Cool. Nice. We'll be back next week. Don't forget to subscribe here to Arsenal Fan TV. Links.